<laughs> hello, hello, and welcome to Horde of Tales Women in Gaming Month. This is going to be Apocalypse Keys, a one shot mystery at Mercy Mansion. I am your keeper. Uh, today, my name is Purna M. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I am a uh, femme presenting individual with black hair and a South Asian Swedish skin. Um, and I will now throw it over to our players when I throw it over to you. Just mention who you are and your pronouns and maybe a one line a physical description for accessibility purposes. Over to you, Assis. Oh, no. um, hi, I'm Assis. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm light, a light-skinned South Asian woman with like some hair and wearing glasses and a black t-shirt. Um, Denver? Hi, I am Denver. My pronouns are she, her. I am a white femme presenting person. And I'm, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> and uh, what do you have on right now? Oh, I am wearing a blue hoodie, a pullover hoodie sweatshirt and I also have white headphones with a white microphone. Perfect. Thank you. And last but not least, Hamalu. Hi, uh, I am Hamalu or Emma. Um, I use she they pronouns. I am a femme non-binary person who uh, have dark hair. It does actually have purple and blue in it at the moment, but you can't see it because of the lighting, which is also blue. Um, and I am wearing slightly gothic makeup because it felt appropriate for the character. And also, I'm a little bit gothic inclined myself. And I have kitty cat headphones on. Amazing. So thank you, everyone, for your introductions. Um, we are going to be playing Apocalypse Keys today, which is a game from Evil Hat by Ray Najadi. And we are very excited to delve into this mystery, or at least I am, because my partner wrote it, and soon you will be able to buy it. But you know, more about that later. So um, you are all at Division. But what does that mean? Where is Division? What does Division's, like, if when you enter the Division offices, what does that look like, Assis? Um, so, so I think what was established earlier is that there's like a hill with like a big fake tree and division is inside that. Um, I, I would assume like you enter from like, maybe between, maybe you enter through the tree and it's an elevator going down, very classic, like, uh, what's the movie I'm thinking of? Get Smart, it's like Get Smart. Um, what are their offices like? I, I'm assuming like kind of spacious, very, very like, you know, metallic and very, um, what's the word? Industrial like, complexy. In, yeah, a very industrial commercial feeling to it. Yeah, no, I can see that. Um, and like many offices or most offices, it is, generally quite mundane looking and suspiciously mundane looking. What is the most mundane thing you can think of about the offices at which you work? Hamalu. Um, I think some of the most mundane things is that in the sort of kitchen mess hall area, there is a um, chores duty roster that everyone has to stick to. Um, you get little marks against your name if you have slacked on your chores. Um, and they also have an end of month potluck dinner. Um, people, depending on who they are and depending on who the monster is, they either <laughs> give a wide berth to what's been created <laughs> by a monster or it's really good and people really are into it. 
but it's for team building, you know? Sure, Confusion. sure. Mm -hmm. What did you bring to the last potluck? Um, I made deviled eggs. <laughs> How were they deviled? I, in, <laughs> well, I used a lot of paprika. <laughs> but you know, it, it's like they were they were delicious. And the people who tried it were very complimentary. Well, I'm sure they had a lot of choice in the matter. Uh, so, uh, Denver, of course there's a lot that is mundane about the offices they are offices but what do you think gives people like or humans or humanoids or omen class monsters what makes the figurative hair the back of their neck stand up what is strange about division there are a lot of doors and not all of them are labeled clearly at all so there are times that you don't know what you're getting into if you open a door could be a broom closet could be something much much worse oh my god if you <clears throat> if you watching uh are neuro spicy in any way you know that mislabeling is extremely dangerous and a form of torture for many um Okay, um, what do you, what corridor or part of the offices do you think you were walking along one day, making your way along? Um, don't want to assume you walk. Um, when you were stopped by security, by some kind of laser beams suddenly maybe you just felt like you should be somewhere else that's up to you but what area of the offices are off limits Assis? um so there's like only one single area that's labeled as maximum security and it's puzzling because we would imagine we require like maximum security but there's something back there that none of us are allowed to see and from what we know, it's like some monster, like beyond even the three of us. We've never seen it. We don't know who this monster is or what this monster is. But sometimes we hear things coming out of that like max security area. And what what happened when you try when you accidentally or on purpose went near it? I think. I didn't think it going near it was not the issue, but there was there was just no way to open it. Like there was no force, no like key, no techniques. There was just no way to open it. Hmm. No door. I mean, there's a label. Oh no. <laughs> not a label. What did this mislabeling label say? No, it was correctly labeled. Is that oh. maximum security? Oh my God. Just when you think they'll zig, they zag. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> cool. So, uh, Denver, on the opposite side of this, what is like the most pleasant part of the division offices to be in? What's your favorite part? Definitely the cafeteria. There's a lot of good food. And at the end of the month, potlucks, I get to help out. I like to help. Define help. Uh, things like setting up tables, taking down, uh, serving the food. Um, they don't trust me with the oven, <laughs> but I can. I can. They trust me to make some of the cold stuff. So there's that. So actual help. That's good. That's. Good on you. Well then, cool. And <laughs> wonder why they don't ask you to help them. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, what? This is this is a question that Hamalu can answer, or or all of you can chime in. How are monstrous agents like you treated differently than human agents? How does it? How does this 
show up in the division structure? I think that when we were brought in, each of us, um, to serve work here with division, uh, we had to have a device that was installed as a control measure should we ever get out of control um, or it seems like perhaps uh, we've gone a little too far the wrong way, let's call it that. Um, and the human agents get access to that control measure and that creates a bit of a power imbalance in the people who work here. That, I call that rude. Yes, me too. How very dare you. I would never be out of control. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. No one would ever expect you to. Why would they hire you if they, they're going to do these things, you know? Yeah. Ugh. I'm perfect and I've never done anything wrong my whole life ever. Yeah. Uh, not me just um, thinking about how Omen class monsters should form a union and that would be a separate episode. Anyway, uh, so coming back to um, present day, um, what is it that you all are up to as you uh, go about your work day? It's sort of like... I'm going to say you've been at the office for a little bit, at least, or at least according to your working hours, you should have been at the office for a little bit. Um, it's sort of uh, early afternoon and you, what is it that um, each of you are doing? Um, I will come to each of you and ask all the questions. This is the part where you get to show off about your incredible characters. So. Let us start with the godmother, Assis. Oh, hi. What, <laughs> what are you up to? Um, should, I, should I describe her first? Um, it's up to you. I, I'll describe her. Mm -hmm. um, so my character's name is Kana, but she's also called the godmother. Her pronouns are she, her, and her highness. Um, and I would say she is, um, she's probably just, she's grabbed, you know, some conflicts from the cafeteria. She is just kind of sitting around in like her room. I, I'm hoping we have rooms. She needs a room. Sure. Let's say you have an office to yourself. And kind of just staring at the wall concentrating and so what you see is like this small desk and this big woman like easily like maybe six four six five and just just like like big muscles wearing like probably like just track pants and you know those those like crop top workout sweatshirts hoodies you're you're in the leisure on the leisurely side of at leisure basically yes um but that but then sense. also just like probably other like random things like she's wearing some sort of fashion glove on one hand for no reason um just like a very small fedora on top just because she liked it that day um two tiny horns like pointing out of her hair just just hidden by the fedora um and she's just sitting at this tiny desk, just staring at a wall. Just concentrating on the conflicts. No, the conflicts are just happening on the side. She is concentrating <laughs> on, she's just thinking about her own godhood and about hell. And she's trying to access it again. She, she thinks if she thinks hard enough, she'll get there. I mean, not that uh, thinking about hell is unusual or unrelatable to the people watching, but can you tell us a little bit about what what was what is Kana's origin story? I mean, you can explore it more uh, as we get into the mystery and sort of in conversations with each other, but just kind of like a concise thing of what is your origin story? Um, so essentially she was, she was some level of God, um, like, we all? Yeah. 
but but she was like really a god god and um you know she had the ability to um basically give life to monsters and she managed to like like i would say she started off as a very relatively minor weaker god but she managed to like through making minions of her own or like just sheer charm and show of power just gathered like a following and managed to claim the throne of hell Before she was somehow tossed out of it and lost most of her powers. Ooh. What happened there? Interesting. Will we find out? Stay tuned. Um, so speaking of um, Ghana's godhood, Hamalu. Yes. Why? One. Why might one think? that you long to worship Aziz's character, Kana, and why do you keep your distance from them still? Mm. Or wow. why, why do you find that they keep the distance from you? Yes. Um, I mean, have you seen her? Uh, <laughs> first of all, look at the evidence, the receipts. Um, she's definitely serving I'm a powerful woman, uh, you know, I had and will have again godhead, and I respect that, is what I imagine I probably tell a lot of people. Mostly it's just that I am drawn to things that are powerful and it uh, drives certain hungers in me. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, with uh, Her Highness knowing my propensity for consuming people um <laughs> i think she's just wary of the fact that um there's a risk that i may succeed one day and consume her but i just you know what i just worship like i, I give like praise i will tell her all day long about how amazing she is because i know that she likes that but equally um it uh I don't know. You, it's you'll fun make for sure me that, to do. You'll make sure that there are cornflakes stocked in the cafeteria, oh, yes. that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your love language is cornflakes. Love it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> feeding people. Feeding yes. people. I'm definitely a feeder. Mm. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> suddenly got very Nick at night. So uh, <laughs> what's <laughs> what's uh, what does your character look like, and where? What are they doing at Division when we open sure. the scene opens? Um, so, penance, as is their name, but when you're friends, you can call him Nancy. Um, uh, he they pronouns, um, but will accept whatever you fancy, whatever makes you happy. Uh, he's happy with that. Um, Nancy will accept whatever you fancy. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. It rhymes. It's great. Makes everyone, everyone loves a poem, right? Um, so he's a slender figure, very pale, uh, has dark hair, um, very well dressed, always looks immaculate. Uh, eye makeup is on point. And, uh, you know, from a distance would just look like a regular kind of person. You would think that, they're, you know, a little ooky spooky in the this person clearly has gothic tendencies but when you get a little closer you realize that there's just something a little off the smile is always just almost a little too wide and toothy and um the vibes are haunting if you will um what i'm doing today is after having checked uh social media for all of the doom scrolling joy that it is because i love that um i tend to go about the office and i rather than having a space of my own i don't necessarily have my own office like the godmother um i like going into everyone else's <laughs> um and i'll just pitch up and i will chat and get to know what's going on with them and you know i'll be seen at 
water coolers or printers or wherever the regular hangouts in an office are just listening and asking questions and just absorbing everyone's energy it's great and that's what i'm doing i'm definitely not doing any work right now (laughs) (laughs) but if you come and ask me what i'm meant to be doing and try to get me to do work i will ask you so many questions about your personal life and make you feel so cared for that you will lose yourself in the conversation and forget you came to ask me anything Love it. Um, And I think you happen to walk past where Denver's character, Zest, is working. Um, You might say hi, uh, but you needn't because you were there when Zest was found. You know them, one might say, intimately. Uh, Zest, tell us what you are up to at Division today. Zest, it, they then pronouns, since they are on the larger side, uh, pushing easily past seven feet with their antlers and just overall size, they tend to get tasked with things like the maintenance work or helping people reach things on high shelves, which they are very happy to do. They like being helpful. They like being useful and feeling productive. And so, sorry, I'm, I keep clicking the wrong button when I'm trying to talk. Um, So if you need to find them, look for where things are either heavy maintenance work is being done or if somebody needs something picked up off the top shelf of something that they can't quite reach. Because Zast will gladly carefully lift them up onto their shoulders so they can reach. Very nice. You might find Zast where things are broken. Is it because they're there to fix it? Or is it because they were doing the breaking? Who can say? Anyway, so um, as uh, Nancy, I don't know if we are friends, but as Nancy's uh, character walks past uh, Zast's, where Zast is working to... um, check in on her highness um just see if she needs anything you know um you notice a very well a a person walking with great purpose towards you um nancy and this person is going to um hmm what do you think your boss looks like? Your your humanoid, one of the humanoid people that you um, answer to. This can be any, any of you. Power suit. Mm-hmm. Sensible court heel. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I'm thinking Larry from Pokemon. I, I don't know how to describe this, but you know, just... Just average white guy, salary man in a suit. Yep. Um, I think it's it's the vibe of someone who wants to be more important in the organization that they, than they are and kind of is trying to do that with bluster. So they walk towards Dress you with the job great... you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, they walk towards you with great purpose they have short cropped um, ash ash blonde hair. They uh, bark orders at you um, or just bark, speak in a barking tone, regardless of what they're saying. They could be saying, this coffee's great, but they will still say it like that. Um, so, uh, Nancy, Nancy. Yes, hi. Why aren't you at your desk? I've been by your desk five times already. 
You weren't there. I have been ensuring that other people have been uh, doing what they need and, you know, helping where I can. I like to help. <laughs> what do you need? How are you doing, by the way? Is your look cleared up? You know this is just my voice. We have had this conversation many times. Sure. What can I do you for? Gather, gather unit three and come into that conference room. Now! You got it. Yep, I'm on it. I am on it like a Shakespearean sonnet. And I twiddle around and head off to find the others. <laughs> so um, you all uh, shuffle into the conference room and uh, this person, you know, I haven't named them. What do you think their name is? I'm not picky. Oh, I did name them. I said their name is Anna Moneypenny because Moneypenny has a ring of not the boss to it. Um, so, uh, right, so Anna Moneypenny glares at all of you for no apparent reason and says, wow, this is going to hurt my throat. I didn't think this through. Um, <laughs> um, unit three are you ready you have been given an assignment so I ready mm -hmm. oh we get to help yay yay <laughs> Denver is the sweetest omen class monster I've ever met oh disasters all right <clears throat> I'm going to say this in a normal voice so that you can understand me and also I don't ruin my throat because yeah. we're just starting. Okay, so uh, Anna says there has been a murder at Mercy Mansion. The mansion has been closely monitored as a potential location for a door of power for several years while under the monster rehabilitation program known as Mercy. The recent killing of a werewolf clone has opened the mansion up to investigation and this is what you are going to do. Your, the claim that you are investigating is that a harbinger class catalyst is reverting monsters to their darker natures and you need to eliminate that threat as permanently as it is possible to do so to prevent ascension. And as Anna is speaking, you can feel the disgust for all omen class monsters like in in the in in their speech. There's no love lost, certainly. You're not sure as to whether that is because most of the omen class monsters who work near or under them uh, are all hyper efficient, even though, they're not, they may, they may seem like they're doing nothing most of the time, but somehow all the work always gets done. So they're just bitter and really not in a good mood in general for life. Um, so having gotten this, um, gotten this brief, uh, they give you some more details about um, the sort of give you um the files that talk about the history of Mercy and all of this stuff. Mercy is the Monsters of Earth Rehabilitated for Calmer Years. It is a program that is works sort of at odds with division. They they don't they they don't they work in the same circles but they are separate entities and they, they do not get along. They don't agree with each other's approach or anything like this. Um, they have positioned themselves historically as um, for monsters, for omen class monsters, as an alternative to division. They're a privately sponsored organization. Um, the agents of this mission have been spread far and wide across the world they're usually, it's, they're usually housed in hidden bases throughout the world, but 
one of the bases, the one that you are going to go to to investigate, is in southern India. Um, it is close to like coffee plantations and tea plantations and hillside forests and things. But it is close enough to civilization that you'll still have electricity, such like public amenities, access and stuff. Um, and the idea of having such places, they're usually fairly close to human civilization because the idea is to reintegrate Omen class monsters just into society. So you are all, is there anything you would like to um, mention about how you, what you grab uh, or how you ready yourselves before you've have like an hour before you're shoved into the transport? I'm going to dress for the occasion. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I am uh, adorned for where I'm going. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I, I imagine that uh, Penance usually packs relatively light uh, in terms of kit that you might need for things. They're used to just kind of winging it. <laughs> um, and uh, relying on other people being far more pre prepared and professional than they are. <laughs> you're you're a monster. You're bringing what you need to to the table. You know exactly. Yep. I am built different. Therefore, I do not need the kit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> kits are kits are for suckers, um, or people who have suckers. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Aziz, what do you? Uh, so um... I apologize, Ghana, Her Highness. What do you? I, I think Kana, Kana's probably packing light. She's she she's just gonna grab sunglasses because she figures it's gonna be sunny, and she will grab a briefcase. Is it an empty briefcase, <laughs> or are the contents just mysterious? I was debating whether it should be <laughs> empty or not. Um, <laughs> I would say no. It's not empty. It contains a like a quick change of clothes and a mini pack of a favorite cereal. So important. And probably like 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 a hairbrush or something, just in case she needs to adjust the hair to look more um, imposing or regal or whatever. I just like the idea of this like briefcase making you look really professional yeah, together exactly. and important and it's like a hairbrush and a change of clothes my go bag yeah. <laughs> no, no, i'm wearing i'm wearing track pants and a yeah. <laughs> but Love your it. hair like it's like it's like when you're i mean uh you know calling upon the experience of no one in particular and certainly not anybody on this call when we were all working from home or stuck at home uh during lockdown yeah. Uh, one may or may not have only cared about this part of what was showing on the camera. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, to to speak of uh, other monstrous things, uh, Zast, what are you taking with you? Zast will bring their favorite blanket, uh, something they, they also bring their safety kit which is really just a bunch of corks that they stick on the end of their antlers so they don't accidentally hurt someone oh actual safety tools i love it amazing okay so you all oh, are oh, that doesn't mm -hmm. me. actually kana will probably put on shoes to like hide her like dragon feet that's just just to be nice to people that's fair. You are going to be fairly close to human civilization, maybe. Um, fair enough. But uh, you know, at least for the duration of the division transport, you will not. You will not get anyone looking at you oddly. Um, so you are all shoved into division transport, which looks and has the general feel of you know those um, cable cars that you that you you can get on as tourists and has the same feel of it's possible that the that 
steel rope thing will snap and everything will go very, very awry. But so it's not what you might call built for imbuing the feeling of security, of physical security in the humanoids. Most Omen class monsters are fine when they travel by this, but um, you all are seasoned pros. You all feel you're, it's like, for you all, it's like taking the bus in the morning to work. But this is, it looks rattly and does not uh, inspire much confidence, but it gets you to the south of India very quickly. So you get there in about half an hour. Um, you get to this tiny town and from there, you are transported in a second, uh, in a second sort of neutral omen class monster friendly transport, which is sort of a uh, go between uh, to all division like organizations everywhere. So it's neutral territory. You take that second thing, you go to a larger city so that no one can actually tell where division transport ended, you get to what it what looks like from afar, a really ornate um, sort of palace, almost, almost palatial, definitely of palatial proportions. Um, like, if you can't picture it, picture one of the size of one of those old estate homes in, in the UK. Um, that kind of uh, thing. If you picture movies where you've seen circular driveways, that's the kind of vibe we're going for. So you get there, um, you're dropped off at the gate, you trudge to the front door. As you knock on the door, or actually, do you knock on the door? Or do you take get, uh, do you want to get the lay of the land first? What do you do? I might slink around the grounds just a, just a little to get a feel for what is going on here when they are not on high alert and there are people here. <laughs> um, so I just want to go and see if anyone is about or doing anything. Uh, just, just on the outskirts, not necessarily in the building, just around the space. Because if people catch me, I'm sure I will have a perfect excuse for why I'm there. <laughs> Right. Of course, of course mm. you will. <clears throat> uh, why? Why would a rival I'm, organization not have people visit? I'm a well-dressed, refined young man. You know, <laughs> pretty privileged. Who, I'm sure I'll go. Okay. Who, <laughs> <laughs> Yay, privileged. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, as he started, you were going to say something. I'm not going to look around, but I'm not going to go in because it's beneath me to knock. So, like, I'm waiting for someone else to do it. It's not beneath Zast. Zast will go and knock <laughs> on the door. Zast will look at, look at, um, uh, Kana be like, um, and yeah, okay, so I'm going to go to what Homelu is doing first. So Homelu, I'm assuming that you're kind of, uh, are you walking the perimeter of the house or are you sort of like? Yeah, at the very least, like halfway around and then can come back if it seems like there's nothing going on. But it's just a, on the off chance we see people in their natural habitat before there are rival organization people around. <laughs> I'm going to go snooping. Okay. So as you walk um, along the perimeter of the house, um, you sort of get realize that it's, it was sort of a, a, a visual illusion that it's, mm. it's, it's as big as it is. It's more that it's shaped like a big house should be, but it's the size of, a sort of maybe three, four bedroom, like big bungalow type of thing. Mm -hmm. If um, 
but it's not it's not but it's 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 got the features the, the architectural features of a like a palatial um mansion-esque mm. place so um as you're walking around you see that there are like hedges and stuff on the one side um in sort of maybe uh several meters away like it's it's sort of a large garden distance away um but you're sort of paying attention to the like whether there are any windows whether there are any other entrances or exits um that you're passing um the wall of the place is sort of a burnished bricky sandstone um so it's sandstone that's been dyed a certain color mm -hmm. and with what one might think anyway um so you get yeah. to a sort of dark alcove because this is a very hilly area so there's a lot of tree cover a lot of uh, forest cover here but it's actually very pleasant you've appeared in like bang in the middle of monsoon so it's very lush very green um you get to uh an sort of an alcove or a darker part of the garden and just next to if you can imagine that part of the of buildings where you see a lot the drainage pipes run so it's kind of an ignored part of usually around the side um you see a mass of what look like you can't tell because you've not you're pretty sure you haven't seen this kind of bug or insect or whatever it is before but you see sort of a swirling mass of bugs and they're all sort of concentrated on something that's on a like a sandstone ledge sort of right next to the pipes what do you do um i'm gonna be like "Ooh, what's over here and i'm gonna go over take the phone out and take a picture send it via the group chat that we definitely have i imagine that um the godmother doesn't pay attention to the group chat she has to be told what's going on there um, sure she's, she's too important to read her own messages um but i'll just ping so that they're aware that it's here um and that i can see it and then i'm going to uh approach and investigate what they might be swarming around i feel i feel drawn towards things that may be trying to consume something because that's what a lot of insects do that's their vibe as well <laughs> <laughs> like calls to like yeah um <laughs> like what you eat little friends <laughs> but i'm also imagining like um uh kana's character is just like someone's changed her message tone to Knox. And then, yeah. and oh, that would be so and annoying. She's, and she's just yeah. like, I don't knock, I don't answer to knocks. Yeah, <laughs> that's very annoying. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think she's gonna see the message, except like she'll probably like it because insects are a monster, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, misunderstood. Yep, um, but, uh, okay, yeah, I'll alert them and then go and investigate. Okay, so you've just taken a random sh like photo of this yeah. swarm and you send it off and then yep. you approach mm. um as you approach whole what would you say you're good at math um i think that he is i think he's a lot smarter than he ever would have let on uh back before this he barely remembers what was before this but was actually really smart, but liked to play dumb because people underestimate you. <laughs> I tell you, the way people treat monsters. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> as you as you approach, you realize that there are not just a vague group of bugs, that they're just the absence of light. They are <sighs> tiny motes of shadow. They are. 427 motes of shut of darkness that are attempting to fill a single silhouette the shadow hive has no physical substance but they do leave a strong psychic imprint what would you say um penance is 
a strong childhood memory or an aroma that you would associate with your childhood? Ooh. Um, lemongrass. So as you approach this being or bunch of beings, um, you get the distinct aroma of lemongrass um, as you approach them. Um, you feel disconcerted, or at least that is what generally uh, one would. They cannot see, but they can form a picture based off of psychic impressions. So even though, they, and also they're trying to present as a person, as a humanoid, but there are 427 of them. They're rarely in agreement about who that person should be. And so they sort of usually present as a grumpy old man. Um, he huh. turns, or they turn towards you and say, Who are you? What are you doing here? Hi, name's Nancy. Um, I just, we, we tried to get the attention of people inside and, and uh, there was no answer. We were a little concerned. So I just thought I'd pop around to see if someone was here. Do you? What? Here? Where's, I, I don't see how that is any of your concern. This is, I, what? Why were you, who are you? Why were you trying to get into the house? And what do you mean no one answered the bell? Ruth is always there to answer the bell. Come um, with me. Sure. Um, what can I call you? I, and like you see their um, affect changes entirely and they become entirely like, I'm so terribly sorry. My name is Shadrach. Shadrach, it's so nice to meet you, Shadrach. It is absolutely my pleasure. Um, who might you be? Uh, my name is Penance. You can call me Nancy if you like, though. Um, but, but yes, well, I'm so very pleased to meet you. I <laughs> don't trust you at all. Why are you here? I'm sorry, that's rude. Well, we will ask, What? why are you thinking of puppets? Ah. <laughs> uh... Well, anyway, we should be on our That's way. We should odd. really get to the door. <laughs> you're, because... Can I just say, you're incredible. This whole thing, I live. This is amazing. The smell thing, is that you? I don't. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't do it on purpose. I'm so sorry. Is that weird? It's what? Enough. Is your problem? Who asks such personal questions? Oh my god, we should really get into the house. It's gonna be so warm outside very quickly. Yeah. Um yep. Okay. I, I can bring you to meet my friends. We are just here. Um well we've been sent here to help uh solve a little problem that has occurred. And um, maybe make some new friends, because I would love to be friends with you. This is great. Um, I have enough friends. Thank you very much. Oh, that would be so lovely. That's so nice of you to say. I love this guy so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you make your way to the door. You join uh -huh. the others. Um, uh, by that point, Zast has actually knocked on the door and mm -hmm. the door has been opened. Um, you don't see anyone um there that is you don't apparently see anyone standing there the the door has creaked open as uh, some as it has a very stereotypical haunted house kind of creak mm -hmm. um as it opens um it, once you step in you see that there is a pale woman who is sort of hiding behind the door um she tries to give you a little smile and you realize that her teeth are a little too pointed her body is a little too tense you her scalp shows through patches of thin hair 
If you reach to shake her hand, her handshake is limp. She is trying not to crush your bones, such as they might be. She doesn't look tired exactly. In fact, she looks like someone who has spent a very, very long time trying very hard not to look tired at all. Um, uh, hello. Uh, welcome to, welcome to Mercy Mansion. How, how may I help? Are you, are you here for help? Takes like a glance at um, her highness, um, takes a glance at Zest, who towers above her, and goes, I don't want to make any presumptions, but uh, why don't, and as, as she's trying to um, I... figure out what you want, um, uh as a as an opposite to um agent anna who was all bluster and no substance a smart uh young woman um who is dressed in sensible clothes what would be sensible for sort of 80s uh 80s india kind of thing um she uh she walks in, shakes whoever is uh, the hand of whoever or hand like limb of whoever is uh, standing the closest to her um, and says, um, um, hello, hello, I am, uh, hello, so nice to meet you. I am the daughter of Principal Smith. Um, I am Esther. Uh, are you here to see my father? We're here to help, not to get help. We're here to help. I, well, um, have you, are you sure? Have you seen our brochure? We really can help. Absolutely everyone. You don't need to be scared. We will, I we will help you. I do not can. get scared and I do not need help. We're here from the division. So, so. She changes uh, her her attitude changes completely when she decide when she realizes that you're you've not come for for safe harbor. You're actually um, someone who might be useful to her. Um, she has grown up around monsters. She is not the least bit intimidated uh, by any of you, um, unlike Ruth for some reason. Um, she, you get the sense that. She's not that interested in helping you either. She just knows that that's the spiel that you have to give people who come. Um, she starts uh, giving you the spiel of like, oh, well, but I'm sure we are always looking for people who, who can uh, be part of the education, of the reintegration. People, uh, beings such as yourself are clearly well established in wider society we are always looking for people for examples perhaps you can come and speak to some of our of our uh well the classes that we are trying to help father doesn't I... understand you know that the, the average human just can't compete with the services our residents can provide we just need to to figure out how to get the best out of them you know i think She's going to stare for a bit and be like, I do not work for you. If you do need someone to rehabilitate, penance here has some issues. <laughs> but no, we, we have work to do. And I will actually look at the other two for once. Um, do either of you say anything? To Ruth um, or to Esther? Yeah, if I've come around the corner with my new shadowy friend, um, I'm probably like prattling off just nonsense. I'd be like, you know, it's funny that you bring up puppets. I actually have this really vivid memory and I'm just like chit chatting <laughs> as we come around. And I'll see everyone be like, hi, oh, you got the door. Is this, um, what was her name? Ruth? <laughs> I'm just gonna, no, what was the name of the woman that, um, Shadrach said? Uh, Ruth, I yeah. think he said, it was it Ruth? Yeah, he said Ruth would answer the door. Yeah. Um, Are you Ruth? I, uh, 
I am, yes. Uh, uh, what hey. might I call you? I'm Penance. Hi. You can call me Nancy, though. Um, she she kind of chokes. Uh, Penance? Your name is. Uh, what what an interesting name. That's I, why a lot of people just prefer to go Nancy, and you know what? I'm I'm easy. Uh, um, Ruth, does it look make you uncomfortable? No, I gotta go. And then, so Ruth kind of like hightails it out of the room. Um, Esther, however, is there and is chatting up a storm, um, trying to like gauge from each of you what you might be able to contribute to the mission um, while sort of saying, oh, but you know, like where, where are you from? But where are you really from? She's that kind of person. Um, and uh, you know, what's, uh, what, what, you're all clearly such talented um, Omen class monsters. I, I'm, uh, this is, this is the best day of my life. This is so great. Um, I, so while she is giving you the spiel, you see um, from appearing from a corridor, uh, almost out of thin air, you see a silver, silvery apparition that appear, apparitions appear, uh, that, that makes its way towards you. Um, you see the a sort of uh, uh, the shape of a young man who is wearing a bush shirt um like a cotton a rough cotton shirt with uh what we call a lungi which is like a um like a length of fabric, usually white fabric, with a golden border that is wrapped around um, your lower, the lower part of your torso. Um, he, what you notice most though, is that even though he is essentially a silvery wisp of what used to be a humanoid, at least, he is very, very hairy. So much hair, all the hair so much hair he comes towards you and he says thank you for coming um esther it's it's all right i will i will take it from here um it was i who requested your assistance um, and um, Esther sort of sticks around do any of you do anything say anything to this person to this ghostly person or to Esther do you encourage her to be around do you encourage her to leave very quickly what do you do I have a question do we because we were asked to come here to solve a murder um were we given any indication that we need to be secretive about our motives here or that we can be open about what we're here for so as division agents you would be you would know that in general all the organizations are fairly secretive about how they work uh they don't necessarily go around discussing things you might have general banter about uh oh, workplace uh, whatever but not anything of any substance so um however you might have some candor with the person requesting your help um so in general aside from this ghostly apparition you probably wouldn't necessarily be too forthcoming with everybody else okay but someone has asked us to come here to investigate Mm -hmm. So uh, this mm -hmm. this ghostly mm. person mm -hmm. is um, is saying that they have yeah gotcha. Um, it was just lovely to meet you, Esther. You're so nice. Hopefully, see you again soon. <laughs> um, uh, Esther 
um, notes with some trepidation that she is being asked somewhat politely to leave. Um, but she has, she sort of looks at all of you, looks up at dust, frowns at the corks on their antlers, <laughs> goes, thinks better of it and uh, turns on her heel and leaves muttering something about having an urgent meeting with the mm. principal. Um, Amit looks much more relaxed, as relaxed as a ghost can look. Um, once uh, Esther is gone, um, I, I forget myself sometimes. Um, my name is Amit. You can. Uh, my name is Amit Raghavendran. You can call me Amit. I. I have to say. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm so glad you are here. So at this point, you are all sort of made uncomfortably aware of how far you've come from the division offices and also something, something about this person or this ghost reminds you that you have all had dreams in the past few days of bloodlust, of using your powers to slaughter defenseless humans and only humans. In the dream, a voice calls out saying, you need to understand how dire this can get. Help me stop this. Humanity cannot survive us giving in to our true selves. As Amit is speaking to you, you realize that the reason that you're remembering these dreams is because it's his voice that you heard in the dream. So at this point, um, I'm going to say, ooh. Right. So, Hanlu. Yes. You were a part of the team that captured Amit huh? originally, alive at the request of Mercy caregivers. What signs of intelligence? Did you gather? Did you recognize in the monster you captured? How have you felt about the reports of his progress towards humanization over the years? I will I will tell you a little bit more. I just want to also ask another question and give the person time to think. Okay. Zast. You spent time at Mercy Mansion before in an attempt to become more human. How did you feel about how you were treated here and why did you leave? So I'm going to get um, actually Zas to answer first. I'm going to come back to um, Nancy because I will give you some more information about Amit first. Mm -hmm. um, Zas kind of felt out of place for a while while they were at Mercy Manor. Uh, they did learn how to put words to their feelings, how to recognize what those feelings were. Uh, the reason they left was because they felt they could do they could be more helpful and not only actively being out in the field 
to stop others from getting hurt, but also could possibly help direct people to where they would have choices in what their fate would be. Like if they if they would also they would talk about Mercy Manor, they would talk about division with the monsters, the other monsters they had encountered, and let them know that there was a choice that they could be that they could be good. And they could help other people be good too. As you say this, um What is a memory, like a fragment of a memory that you have of being here? Is this the Mercy Mansion you were at, or was it another one? They can remember their first few days at uh, Mercy Manor. It was a different location than this one. It was a lot colder there. Um, but they remember the fear of the unknown, not knowing who they were, what they were, what their purpose was, all that, and it terrified them. Um, but Mercy Manor, like I said, that helped them be able to put words to their feelings, to voice what was going on in their head. Um, uh, yeah. So here's the thing. You now work for Division, and while you went there to be helpful, to be helpful to a larger, a larger population of monsters, people, and you know that the messaging you're getting from Division and potentially from the person asking you to investigate their death, you're feeling like, but this place helped me. I, you're getting very, you, you have sort of mixed emotions about the two things and you're trying to disentangle this place that, you know, provided support and therapy and all, what sounds like therapy and all of these things, um, or at least had some therapeutic value. And what your current occupation and your current day to day looks like. So I want you to sit with that. Um, Hamalu, or Nancy, sorry. Yes. Um, so you know um, from the briefing, you remember that the person or the humanoid that was murdered, that was killed, did not have this level of uh, self-awareness and speech. They were classified as a wild, feral creature. Um, in the most reductive of terms, they were called a werewolf. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. This person, from what you understand, this person, the, the person who died was cloned from a werewolf. And He, this person, though, in front of you, is surprisingly grounded. He's not levitating. He's, like, you haven't, as you've been walking around the ground floor of this place with him, he's not, like, passed through walls or anything. He's, he's being as present and inclusive um, mm -hmm. as, as one might be, one could be, um, even though he is immaterial enough to be passing through things. Um, do you ask him anything? Um, 
Yeah. So you said I was part of a team that captured Amit for Mercy Mansion. Is that correct? Mercy Mansion. Um, say that. Sorry. Did you say that I was part of a team that captured him? Um, yes. Yes. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I think I'll ask, because if, if, if I've done work for them before, it might have been quite a while ago. Um, the thing about penance is that their monsterhood and condition is such that the hunger will frequently remake and reshape and break them and turn them into further the uh, vision of hunger and desire that uh, that they, the entity has been seeking. So this was maybe like a, a version of myself before and I tend to lose parts of who I am each time that it happens. So um, I think perhaps in trying to capture him as a means of subduing monsters, I have to consume just a little part of them. It helps other people do what they need to do. Um, so the memory of that is quite stark. Uh, and seeing him here has probably actually got Nancy a little quiet at first, which is a rare thing. Um, I'm just staring at him for, for a, a decent bit of time before I just kind of lean in a little closer. You're different from what I remember. What the, well, yes. What happened to you? I'm dead. I thought that much was... Well... <laughs> So, um, sure. just just to just as a point of mm. information, yeah, you do you do know that he, he was alive when when you captured him, yeah, um, and you remember him being feral and stuff. But he, um, this was more than four years ago that you captured him, mm -hmm. and you get the sense that when you captured him, he was not like. He was looking ill. So you're not surprised to see him as a ghost once yeah. you realize who he is. But you're also like, it doesn't feel like you died just now. That's the thing, yeah. It'd be like, yeah, but it's not just that you're dead. You're diff You're talking and, you know, more present. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's it's one of the conditions of being part of Mercy's mission to be able to communicate with the humans. I, of course, I speak. I've, I have human intelligence. I, I mean, did they give you that, or did they uncover something? Look, I have been a. I have not just been helping with the efforts. I've also been receiving their help for oh sure four years. I I don't feel as you know that feeling where you just you see a human. You used to see a human, and you just wanted to rip there roads out and then as he says this um you all you all um uh basically there's you all realize there is a sudden absence of sound a moment of complete silence you can't hear anything you can't hear your own footsteps if you move you can't hear anything there are psychic flashes of blinding rage and when sound returns all of you gain one darkness token Ooh. Oh, no. um can i say that uh that that 
energy that he just brought to that scene um has also uh let me double check the i feel a yearning for something that i can't have that 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 the urge to tear a throat out has clicked on an instinct with the uh, with penance um so um da, 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 da. okay I would say you gain two additional darkness tokens then. Mm. Um, cool. All right, so that is. Penis is leaning a little too close to this and like completely <laughs> enraptured. The other two would absolutely <laughs> notice that. <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> um, so when that moment has ended, um, you. So two questions, anyone can answer them. What memories of impotence, of a complete lack of power, of agency, does this flash of silence stir up within you? And who, whom amongst you is, whomst even, amongst you um, seems to suppress the infection of rage the most quickly. Mm. Um, I I'm happy to oh. remember their earliest days in that moment uh, when they were first waking up where they were found. Um. Yeah, I, I think uh, Kana will also probably think of like her first few days after she fell from her godhood. Like, I, I would, I would imagine that like at first among humans and being filled with rage, she was probably just, she just lost it for a bit. She was not in her own control and just kind of lashing out at all this puny humans etc etc mm. um i think penance there's something about the silence and the intensity of the emotions that is kind of doing the opposite it's feeding into that part of themselves that's pulling them a little closer to what they're destined to become because that absence is like the void. It is that empty, dark hunger that is quite literally fueling them. And there's something about it that just draws them in. <laughs> in a totally healthy way. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about mental health here, folks. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So when that moment passes, Um, <clears throat> you realize Amit is talking and like has gone back to his measured, like perfectly humanoid tone of, and not even like an angry tone, just like a regular uh, person just telling you about what's happening. Um, his voice grows a little pensive once he's done explaining to you what happened since you last saw him. Um, even though he was like, vaguely annoyed but not really angry you know when you were asking him things he as as he's explaining things to you he's sort of like moving um moving around the the mansion kind of showing you the layout of the place uh gesturing and when he when he passes by the places he says, you know, um, he's telling you, oh, but you know, then this happened, then I, we went through this re rehabilitation program. It was great. It's done wonders for me. As you can see, I'm completely fine. However, I don't know if, and like he's staying away from the walls and you get the sense that like, because when you veer closer to the walls because of the arched nature of the, the ceilings, you get, there's a slight, the sound travels 
differently when you go closer to the walls. Um, when he is passing by these places uh, that he's showing you, he says, oh, yes, and also uh, that's the library, da 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 rehabilitation, da 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 That over there is the kitchen. Uh, no potluck dinners there, let me tell you. Uh, sort of walks past, goes, and that's, you know, the, the south entrance to the gardens. Lots of lovely local vegetables, some coffee being grown, some tea. Um, that is our, uh, used to be a chapel. Nobody really uses it anymore. Um, that was decades ago. Um, that is the power room. Uh, those are the stairs down to the pit, you know, the usual kind of architecture. Um, and then he, um, uh, he sort of stops near the kitchen and sort of says, um, look, I know you all realize that you have not been called here to investigate my death. I, I was hoping for it to be less obvious than this, but obviously Division sent an officer who was there when I was captured. I, anyway, that doesn't matter. What matters is this. I don't, I don't think, I don't think the rehabilitation efforts are working as well as they should. I, they, what are they, they doing to people? I, are they not working on other people? Or are they not working on you? I was, I was, I was, I did undergo rehabilitation efforts myself and occasionally I will still, you know, consent to being on the receiving end of that, but something odd is happening to the, to the monsters. I, there, I did slip this into the report, but I hope they decoded it and I was hoping they would have given you advance warning, but It's not working, and they're they're just they're just the thing about rehabilitation programs is they're make they're letting the monsters reintegrate into human society, and they're not ready, or something is something is off. They're not they're they're reverting to their monstrousness, and as he's saying this. Uh, sorry, uh, did you have a question? No, 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 it's fine. You finish. So as he's saying this, a large human or an attempt at a large human um, comes out of the kitchen. Um, Kana, you notice that this person being is a reformed dragon. They can't quite get the shape of their self right. You know, it's clearly concentrating to keep their skin looking like skin and not like scales. Uh, to you occasionally notice that like one of the hands has three fingers or six fingers and then goes back to human, the human average of five fingers. Ugh, so normative. Um, you can tell that there's what looks like scorch marks around their mouth um, because the mouth looks fairly humanoid, but probably breathes fire. Um, they occasionally um, put a hand to, to their face to pretend as though they are smoking, even though there is no, there, obviously there is no cigarette or anything that looks like a cigarette or similar. They just 
are trying to cover the fact that smoke sometimes emits from their mouth. Um, he sort of they he sort of comes out of the the kitchen holding a plate of um, macaroons, and he says, "Hello, hello, hello! What have we got here? New people? Have you recruited more people, Emmett? Would you?" Oh, sorry. I, like he almost shoves the plate of macaroons into your face, um, but uh, he realizes at the last moment that like his depth perception is off, and he goes, "Ah, these arms are too long again. I'm sorry. It's been a stressful day." And like as as he talks about the stress, you see like smoke coming out of his ears. Um, my, <sighs> can I interest you in a macaroon? They're fresh. Macaroon. macaroon? I would love one. I please. I'll, I'll like Kana will very hesitantly reach out, but she will grab her and she'll be like, mm, "You seem like a noble beast. You're you're trying a bit too hard to look human." Though. Um, he turns towards you and he goes. What is too hard? And his like voice has dropped several octaves. Cause he's like, ooh, dragon feet. Um, but yeah. You can see my feet. Dragon nose. What can I say? Fair. I, I'm just gonna be like, no, I don't really agree with beasts and monsters trying to look like humans but if you're going for it you could at least try being a bit more natural um and i'll just kind of like like flex one of my muscles like my muscles just be like if, if, if you're thinking of for yourself as you know, what am i trying to say Stop trying to make yourself a human that you're not. Just just think of yourself as the, I presume, dragon that you are and let yourself appear human. Um, he sort of is a little taken aback and to sort of buy time, you assume, um, he sort of turns and starts to say, like, as if to gesture towards the kitchen and say, that is a fascinating view. I would love to hear more. Um, and to make you realize why it's a good idea to stick around here. There's all kinds of help that's available. And so he gestures into the kitchen. As you all are making your way into the kitchen, um, there is a sudden flash where the baker's form warps and enlarges. And where you saw their head previously is now just a roar of flame. And you see a dragon's head in its place. You see that the dra and you especially, um, Kana, notice that this person looks angry, ready to attack. Um, what do you all think in, of the following? Who is in the most danger from the dragon's assault? And what countermeasures do any mercy staff that have rushed in to help immediately take, um, like they they take him out for good. Mm. So we're gonna think about those questions and we are going to take a break. Um, uh, so if you all have enjoyed the story so far, please return in, 10 minutes. In the meantime, there will be some 
ads. Who doesn't like capitalism? Uh, we will see you soon. Um, stay put to see who else goes up in flames. Welcome back. We are playing Apocalypse Keys for Horde of Tales Women in Gaming Month. If you um, don't know what they are up to, they are uh, raising money for <clears throat> um, women in uh, women for women international. They help uh, survivors of um, war and violence. Please consider donating if you can. Uh, women in Gaming Month is also an incredible uh, opportunity for women, femme presenting people, to be at tables that they may or may not always have a chance to be at. So it's a great uh, server and a channel to support in any way you can. If you don't have the funds, because let's face it, all of us in TTRPGs pass the same 20 bucks back and forth. Um, if you don't have the funds, please do consider retweeting or amplifying the the uh, purpose of this charity, this entire month of charity streams, and amplifying the fine femme folks you see on stream. Now, back. <laughs> now, back to uh, our game. So, in the second half of this stream, we are going to be doing some investigating. So all your characters have now seen two ticks of the doomsday clock. You've seen the moment of violence. You have seen the dragon's head burst into flame. Um, now, usually for an Apocalypse Keys game, you really want to take your time and savor all the delicious mechanics of this game. Unfortunately, we don't have all the time in the world, so there will be some awkward explanations that I will have to cut in for. For instance, when you are playing an Apocalypse Keys game and you are investigating an Apocalypse Keys mystery, you have facets of the mystery that you have to uncover. So, for the facets, the facets of the mystery that now that you have more of a sense of the lay of the land and the person you're speaking to, or the being you're speaking to, the facets that you need to figure out of the mystery, who in this place is the harbinger of the apocalypse? Where is the door of power? The identity of Amit Raghavendran's killer? and the source of power that is regressing Mercy's residence back into monstrousness. You may choose um, now to um, explore, um, but I would say before you go off, it would be good to get the answers to um, those two questions that I posed to you um, before the break, which were when um, the baker's form warped and his head burst into flame, who was in the most danger from the dra dragon's assault? And what countermeasures do you witness the staff of Mercy Mansion take immediately to take this being out for good? Good. Mm. I, you know, to tie into our questions about our division and what is mundane, I feel like a very interesting safety measure to things that are a sudden spike in heat is water sprinklers. <laughs> um, <laughs> to kind of offset anything and, and prevent uh, flame from spreading, especially if this is an old building, they don't want it catching on fire. So I think perhaps there is a, a rather mundane but effective measure for the flame and heat mm, but but i but i mean I, I would say the sprinklers definitely would turn on but then to actually to take care of the baker for good mm -hmm. i imagine there's there's something more devious there um i mean if the sprinklers are on i'm assuming maybe they like days 
like tasing them with like all the water subduing the monsters subduing by submerging love it um submerge and then i'm also yeah i am playing a very low uh uh impulse control uh character so i'm also okay being the one who's in the most danger because i feel like a sudden spike in this flame and the anger and the danger immediately pulls me in uh it's almost like it's against my will because it's my inner monster and the thing that that calls to me that pulls me towards these things so even if there's something left over that would make the sensible move of getting away from this i can't help but want to feed on it can't help myself <laughs> interesting just gonna <laughs> check something in your playbook so sure no, you're still good. All right, cool. Um, so, uh, answers, questions? I was in the most danger. Of it, it's... Yeah. yeah, me. I am in the most danger because I moved towards it rather than away from it. I see. I thought that was just a, an expression of your... No, I mean, why not both? <laughs> <laughs> I I I am I'm drawn to it absolutely and this desire to perhaps whatever it is that is troubling this person do they need it taken away from them <laughs> I would say that calls for a power through the darkness move Oh our first role ladies and gents <sighs> and yeah. all people across the gender spectrum Yeah Oh, I went past it. Power through the darkness. Here we go. Um, and I have three darkness yep. tokens right now. So I don't... You... Mm -hmm. Hey, Zast. We are back doing the things. We are just uh, um, Homily's character. Nancy is just about to power through the darkness um, as, <laughs> as Nancy is moving closer to Ooh. George the dragon. George! Okay, so that was a 4 and a 2 plus a 3. It comes to a 9. Ooh. So, for those of you watching who might not know what the moves are, power through the darkness is when you push the limits of your supernatural powers, straining to do the extraordinary or avert imminent danger. Mm -hmm. um, on a nine, you use your powers with great precision and effect, changing the situation before you. Uh, hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you like Would you like to gain a bond with someone? Yes. <laughs> Hamalu, the answer is always yes. What mm -hmm. is your what is your I... what is your uh bond? Um uh bond start with um so basically just who uh so if it is um George's character, if it is one of your other uh, unit members, just what do you suddenly realize or feel, or what what bond that you currently have do you feel more strongly about? Um, perhaps a bond to this person, George, mm -hmm. um, because whatever it is that is causing them to do this reverting, and then maybe just the memory of that dream that I had of that 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 bloodlust the the urge to to slaughter and and being told of the warning signs um and it's just like this connecting moment of of uh my drive towards figuring that out and then trying to take that um bloodlust from him I guess. Nice. Yeah. Um, so in a moment, it's helping him. 
<laughs> but also, you know. So. Hmm. I don't know if that works. If you need me to work something else, I can. No, 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 no. It does work. Um, okay. You do, you rolled uh, really well. You definitely sort of consumed the flame. Mm -hmm. um, how, however, I will say that you gain another darkness token because you essentially fed on someone, making them I let did. you feed on them. I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, see, I don't know if he was technically willing, because uh, my impulse is about finding a willing victim to sate my hunger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this counts as willing. <laughs> Let's say, for the sake of all of our mental health, that it does. Yes. Um, so, um, I'm helping. Right. Uh, Looks awesome, thing... helping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being helpful. <laughs> yeah, you're having a good influence on your mm. unit members, Zest. Um, so uh, now, just as a reminder, the facets of the mystery that you want to investigate now that you have uh, mm, neutralized the situation, uh, you want to find out who the harbinger is, where the door of power is, the identity of the person who killed Amit, and the source of power that is regressing Mercy's monsters. Um, just as a reminder, Amit hasn't told you much about his death. No, um, I, and his, I had a question about that. Yeah. Like, without asking about it, would Kanha be able to estimate like how powerful the monster Amit is? Um, I think in general, I would say because you are agents of division and you have, you are practiced in, uh, figuring out, um, you're in assessing your opponents, uh, such as they might be, or people or beings that you encounter in the field. I think you can, when they show the monstrous part of them, you, you, you get the sense of their true power. So you you might have caught a glimpse of it when he was talking about the hunger, the bloodlust. Um, but if he's just talking to you, like he, in his normal uh, sense, in his the way he normally talks, uh, no, you have no idea what he's capable of. Just the sprinklers happening. I'd like to think that after consuming that power, by the way, I just blow out a puff of smoke <laughs> like someone who's just taken a, a pull of a vape <laughs> <laughs> love it okay so um what do you do next so amit um is pulls you all aside and, and says look they're all distracted george is just i don't know what what is up with george but this is exactly what i'm talking about look mm. he's just I, this is what happens. Can you imagine if this had happened when, when George was out in the village buying like supplies for baking? I. Terrible. Did you, have you reverted or did you die before this all happened? I have been dead for some time. I have spent time reacquainting myself with the people at Mercy, and I, I don't remember much of my uh, life when I was, uh, when I was actually, uh, I mean, it is also difficult to make that distinction between when I was alive and supposedly my afterlife now because everything just makes so much more sense now I don't feel huge bursts of emotion bursts of anger bursts of rage I don't I how did you die 
I'm aware it may be a sensitive issue, but I imagine the information may be pressing to our investigation. Like I said, all I all I remember is a really acrid taste in my mouth. It felt like my insides were burning. And not in the way when I was when I was a werewolf in the truest sense of the word. I I would transform and there would be this clawing, but it was glorious the way that my body transformed. It was it was incredible. It was powerful. It was. But that burning sensation wasn't like that. It was on the inside. I I don't know what else to tell you. I know I know I was here because nowhere else that I have ever been has had walls like this. And you look up and I think in the hullabaloo, you have been pushed into the kitchen as they try to like get um, George out of the way. Um, you see that it is a large, arguably one of the largest areas that you've seen in the in the mansion. The atmosphere is stifling, it's heated, it's pervaded with smells that you'd rather not think about too much. Let me ask you, what smells for each of you, or any of you that wish to answer, hit you the strongest when you enter the kitchen? And what do you think is causing it? I, I think it's an easy one for Kana. It's probably the spell of like, you know, like like burning flesh, hmm. which which is probably being caused by, you know, the whole dragon head of flame thing. I think maybe there's that acrid. It's sweet but in entirely the wrong way that rotten fruit can have something as to what's causing it i'm not sure but perhaps something that is alluding to the fact that things here are maybe not as they seem hmm. um zast do you pick up on any aromas or non-aromas Uh, Denver, you're muted. Uh, is that better? Yep. Okay. Um, Zest kind of gets a almost sickly sweet scent. Mm -hmm. I like, but it's almost like it's covering or trying to cover up like the scent of rot. Or rotting meat. Mm. So, um, I would like to do You Can't Hide Your Heart From Me. And how many darkness tokens do I have again? You have one. Okay. I will sp spend the... Oh, you're on mute again. You will spend yeah. the token. Yep. Okay. Yep. And... Oh, that is five. Five. Uh, okay. Um, hang on. I'm going to find. Do you want to read out what happens when you use this?
uh, when I it says you are sensitive to the surface thoughts and strongest feelings of those around you, when you deepen your senses, spend tar darkness tokens and roll. Mm -hmm. On an 8 to 10, you sense more under the surface and can ask uh, two specific questions. So you got a 5, right? Yeah. On a 7 or below, the darkness within you takes hold and will break the mind and heart of who you were connecting to. And the keeper tells you what price you must pay to save them from the worst of your power. Hmm. Hey, <laughs> where does our GM? <clears throat> what is it that you're actually going to be doing with your Hello? power? Uh, I was trying to figure out uh, what was being hidden mm -hmm. um, and what was what uh, the, one of the questions I was hoping I could ask was, what don't you realize you know? Yeah. So we could try and get a try and get a key, but clearly the dice hate me. <laughs> well, the dice tell a story. This is clearly not a key we are allowed to have. I don't think I have. I don't think my power would affect you either. Oh, hello. Hey, hey uh, can you see me? Hear me? Yes. Okay, amazing. Sorry about that. I do not know what happened. Okay, so um, I think what I would say is I can either inflict a condition upon you or you can take a darkness token for what I'm about to say. I will take uh, a condition. Okay. Um, while I am getting back to you about the specific wording of the condition, um, I will ask what the others are doing because basically what we want to know is when you are looking around either for the source of these aromas or smells or whatever or anything else what are you looking for because at mm -hmm. this point you're looking for clues and yeah which are called the keys of the apocalypse yeah i think um perhaps just oh you know, like fitting the brand of um the monster that Penance is um, couldn't help but notice that when Amit was talking about the um, the way that the rehabilitation was working, did mention that this kitchen and like being able to eat here was a part of that. And so, if they're using food in some way to help rehabilitate people, I'm just curious if there's something around here that looks like it might be suspicious um, and sort of. Uh, playing a part in helping people rehabilitate themselves to be more human and then, you know, setting that trigger within them in some way. So I'm going to go mm. sleuthing around the kitchen and just open up boxes and <laughs> uh, looking for what they're feeding them here. The approach I want to take, I mean, I, I know where the smell I was smelling was coming from, but I, I think, like, given what um Amit described like that kind of acidic burning feeling down the throat. I I want to try and find acid in a sense. Like not like anything acidic, what what I think could be acidic, could be poisonous, things like that. Also I would like to use mother of monsters and like bring a monster into the world to help me. 
Nice. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, that's a playbook move, right? Yeah. Go for it. Roll. It is 10 darkness tokens at all. Like, do I have to spend a darkness token? What does that do? Uh, you won't have it anymore. So you won't get to add yeah. that to your rolls after you use it. Oh, okay, it adds to the roll. That's fine. I, I'll... So I want to essentially bring in some sort of, you know, hound-like feature. Maybe just your typical hellhound. I mean, I was ruling hell. Um, and like for favor, I'd, I'd say that Tana probably like starts looking slightly more like monstrous. Like as she just starts concentrating on a spot in the floor and you know, like like her muscles bulge a bit, her horns grow slightly, her like you know teeth teeth sharpen a bit. She's just feel, looking a bit more monstrous as sort of just energy, like kind of translucent energy channels from her through the floor, trying to like do a hell hound. Okay. Ennis loves it when you work oh. like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I rolling? Oh, I'm just rolling, right? I don't add anything. What would um, I yeah, no, you don't. Oh. Yeah. Um, That's but, a 10. Ooh. Um, so before I do with that, I'm just going to say that Zest, uh, I would say that you gain the, um, uh, the defensive condition. Um, so you are, you feel mm -hmm. like everyone around you is able to do things to help, to help the situation, but not you. You were helped by this place. You were helped by a place like this, at least, but nothing, you can do nothing, just nothing. And then, so the more you kind of are... Like, if anybody says, hey, you want to look over there, or you didn't find anything, you take that in the worst way possible. Hmm. Okay, and a cease, let us deal with your role. Um, chuk, 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 chuk. Uh, can you read out the description of what it, what the, um, ruin move is and what you what uh, um, so Sorry, it's Ma yeah. mother of monsters you have the ability to bring into the world terrifying monsters of beauty mm -hmm. so I already described the process and what I'm bringing so on a 10 the child is perfect and obedient it helps as you wish and sees you as a parent describe what dark powers it has please um, describe what dark powers it has I mean, just like an unearthly sense of smell, just just the ability to root out stuff. Nice. Uh, okay, so um, I am going to say that uh, Nancy, you find as you're rooting around, you find a silver dagger stained with blood and covered in thick brown fur. Mm. Um, Ghana, yes. do you have, does your, uh, m does your monstrous entity have a name? Hmm. I, I mean, I, I guess I would name it, it is my child. Um, it, it's one of many hellhounds, but it's fine. Um, what's a good hellhound name? Um, wait. Naming a dog is, is so too important to just do split second. Um, <laughs> what's a good dog name? Fido. Or you could call it Lucy, like a play on Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Let's go for Lucy. Yeah. Um, so Lucy is sniffing around um, and sort of like sniffs open the cupboards under the sink and finds what looks to you like a like a 
a rusted over talisman and it is soaked in blood. You also, um, because you're not like following Lucy around, Lucy brings this to you. When you are what, rifling through the cupboards, you find um, in like a, a, a larger cupboard, like a cooling cupboard, you find a, um, uh, what's it called? Um, a perfect, pristine, multi-layered cake. And if you move it a little bit, you realize that part of it is looks eaten through. And if you look at that part, you see maggots feasting on the inside of it. That's a strange cake to be keeping around. I'm just going to hold the dagger up. <laughs> this place is super dark, everyone. Look at this. <laughs> and I'm grinning and I look entirely too happy about it. <laughs> Fur! Amit! Amit! Did you get stabbed? <laughs> I don't know. Let's just let's not assume that's his fur. Anyone could have been stabbed. You're right. He's the only dead person we know about right now, though. Uh, Amit um, says when I when I uh, woke when I had my when I was conscious again after my death I I don't remember any stab wounds and I mean everything had been cleaned up by the time I came to my senses I, I wasn't told there was any blood Mm. Your more present self, um, had that happened before you were killed? Only when I met you before, you were more primal. <laughs> Again, says it with entirely too much glee and an unsettling <laughs> grin on their face. Hmm. Look, I, about six months ago, I stopped, I stopped participating in the rehabilit rehabilitation efforts. I, I didn't eat any of the same food. I didn't attend any of the sessions. If I did, it would be not directly. I would, you know leave a camera in the in the classroom do like a join with hybrid technology that kind of thing hybrid learning great for monsters gotta say um i don't understand exactly what is happening but i do know that since i stopped actively participating i I'm not saying there's no rage, but there is less rage. Interesting. Well. Okay. It seems like there's something very wrong going on. And perhaps this food is part of it, but this definitely got used to gank someone Stab someone yeah. yeah i mean why does the food have maggots does the food normally have maggots like i'm gonna ask him. so um as a as an omen class monster and someone who has attended the potluck things at your office mm. you will know that this is not that unusual it's just that the presence it's, it's not unusual to have such things because monsters there are monsters who digest rotting food better but um, you do know that in this part of the world, these specific types of maggots appear when there is food that is rotting that has 
in an inherently acidic quality. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Amit, where else do you feel was significant to rehabilitation when you were doing it? I mean, the food and... I suppose... I mean, honestly, like, there's so many places in the in the mansion that you could go to that would just... that you could find yourself alone and dwelling on things that that should just that I that bring the darkness with it and the thoughts and the thoughts and the thoughts it's the walls what do the do you think the walls play a part in that what's up with the walls <laughs> can I go over and and, and just inspect them I want to vibe check the walls please once there mm -hmm. <laughs> um i i will i will say i would like you to roll for um unleashing the i because it listen if there's something funky or weird or dark or creepy about these walls i'm absolutely gonna want to yeah all right okay so i will say it said uh grasp roll for grasp keys okay um because I'm thinking, here's my slight tangent to why I feel like it ties to... I, I don't know necessarily that I want to roll Gnawing Edge of Hunger, because I'm happy to roll with Grasping Keys. But um, this place, right, Mercy Manor, is, is sold as this place where you can come and seek some sort of atonement and, like, becoming human and, um, you know, shedding the, the monster of you. And it gives people hope. And so... Hope is quite specifically one of the things I feed on. Um, and so if this place is meant to be like this, uh, the embodiment of the hope for these monsters, then that's kind of what I'm trying to tap into. Um, but I can roll um, the the grasping keys. Um, I mean, if you want to, if you want to uh, roll uh, Annoying Edge of Hunger by all means do so i just don't think it's the right time for yes it. yes and i i agree that's what i mean i, I like I'm, I, I'm i'm trying to tap into what they what they do but I, I agree that um it's not necessarily what i'm doing at the moment do i want to spend a hunger is this important i feel like it's important you know what to do i'm gonna i'm gonna i'll spend the darkness token why not um okay oh. uh, okay uh uh it's an eight that's respectable that's an okay roll right Yep, that is very okay. respectable. So grasping keys it's is when you are okay. searching for a clue, investigating the signs of the apocalypse, or using your powers of darkness to gather okay. information. Um, <clears throat> so on an eight, I will say that you, as you approach the wall, You might be saying, for instance, um, should probably check over here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something, as you're talking to Amit about what's up with these walls, da, 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 as you walk towards the walls, you find that you can't hear your own words when you're next to the, to the wall. It's absorbed the sound and do you lean closer or do you go back? Of course you lean closer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one shot. We touch the buttons. Let's go. <laughs> it's true. When you when you lean closer and as more of like your um what passes for your hands, what passes for your ear goes closer to the wall, you hear just not even screams, but just whimpers. Screams are for people who still have hope that someone's going to hear them and rescue them. Whimpers tell you that hope is lost. And 
you don't quite know why, but when you touch the wall, it looks dry, but it feels wet. Oh, this is this is kinetic sand. I've seen this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Penance is doing the face, which the two of my team will know the face. Um, I will say that um, Penance has, while you don't exactly understand it, you have now discovered the source of power that is regressing the residents of Mercy Mansion. Uh, what do the two of us see while Penance is doing this? Like, apart from the face? You just see Penance for some reason pressing up against the wall, but so being uncharacteristically quiet. You can't hear them at all. That's not normal. I would like <laughs> to punch. Yeah, there'd normally be like a giddy little laugh at this kind of thing, but... <laughs> <laughs> I would love it if I could punch. You're gonna punch... <laughs> what are you gonna punch? The wall. You're gonna go go up to um, next to uh, penance, or you're going to punch another area of the wall. <laughs> so whatever's closest to me, I'm just gonna punch the wall. Yes. Um, okay. So I will say you go up to um, penance. Uh, Zas, do you do that as well? As in, do you go yep. up to the wall? Yeah, and I am also going to punch the wall. But so mine is. <laughs> Mine is more <laughs> motivated in frustration that I couldn't do much to help. Oh, okay. Um, I am saying that. Just want to check. Uh, does that trigger anything for you, um, Zest? It does not. Okay. Just check. All right. Uh, Actually, wait, hang on. Uh, if I'm frustrated, I do believe I gained some darkness tokens, but I'm going to double check that real quick. Um, right. So, um, Assis's character, um, Ghana, goes up to the wall, punches it. You feel like... Okay, sorry, apparently our uh, captions are being weird. Sorry. Um, you so when Kana touches the wall, you feel again the same kind of like instead of punching what you expect the kind of texture you expect to punch. It, like kinetic sand, it moves around your fist almost like uh, as if you're skin your being is repelling it so homaloo is still here against the solidish wall um i do gain darkness tokens when i feel frustrated okay so zast now has two oh you spent one though didn't you um yeah so earlier yeah. so you have one still assis has none and homaloo has two okay so um, no, I do have one. I don't remember where I got it from, but I do have one. How about you spent it? Did I? Yeah. No. Anyway, we will okay, deal with anyway. that. So, so when you and Zast, uh, when Kana and Zast punch the wall, so when, when Kana punches the wall, it kind of repels uh, from her skin. Um, and... If you keep punching, do you do you keep punching, or when the when the wall reacts like that, do you pull your hand back? I, I pull my hand back. You pull your hand back. Yeah. The wall springs back into place as if nothing ever ever happened. <laughs> the your um, Lucy was that the dog's yeah, name? Lucy was the dog. Lucy uh, is gonna come to you and just go. <laughs> With all three heads, uh, like at your feet, just like headbutting your your legs, um, and if you move a little out of her way, 
she is going to headbutt the wall and go straight through. Uh, can't see Lucy anymore. Oh, it, uh, I I am looking like visibly like just frustrated and angry, and I for once will actually turn to Penance and address him directly and be like, "My dog just went through this wall." Yeah, there's like whimpering going on. It is wild. <laughs> uh, Go fetch it. <laughs> Oh, right, yep, can do. Um, also, we need to look into that Esther, because I'm just saying, she seemed really sus, and she was like, I can help you, we can help, come in, we'll help you. <laughs> and then, like, really annoyed when we uh, were here to see Amit, I, she, she, sus, and I'm going to try and go through the wall. <laughs> I'm going to do what boss mommy told me to do. <laughs> um. So, I will say that, um, so, when Zast punches the wall, they kind of go like not the not the bottom half of their torso because you're like seven feet tall, right? Uh, actually, closer to seven and a half. Yeah, so you're seven and a half feet tall. When you punch through the wall, the top part of you, like so, as if you were sw you were diving into the wall, your top half goes whoop into the thing, and you're sort of like like hanging half out half into the wall your um uh you can hear um lucy barking zast um and you hear the sounds of a bunch of tiny voices in it's not prayer but it sounds a lot like that tone Similarly, um, when Kana presses up against the wall now that you've retracted your hand, I'm assuming that you want to press against it now because your dog's inside or somewhere, um, you don't hear the whimpers that um, Nancy's character hears. You hear, similar to what Zast hears, you hear tiny little voices raised in not prayer but certainly a su some kind of supplication and oh, you you that... don't you don't hear your dog oh hey i mean if, if they're in supplication that that that's not bad hmm all right uh, Anna, I can hear Lucy. Can we hear? Can, can we hear Zest? Because Zest is like, if Zest's head through the wall, is it like a like the void of sound is affecting that? Do we just see their butt? <laughs> you just you see their you 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 hear Zest's muffled voice. Mm -hmm. Like you can hear that they're saying something. You don't necessarily hear what they're saying. Mm. Like, you know, like the most emphasized word, maybe, but like, not yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Wonderful. I would like to try and walk through the wall also. <laughs> <laughs> no fear. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like fun. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, yeah. I definitely. thought I was the himbo. <laughs> <laughs> this is like power prof himbo. Yeah. Fighting crime. Anyway. Um. I would like you to roll for um, powering through darkness. Oh, okay. Power through darkness. Um, just roll through. Oh, oh. Okay, so um, I got a 12 and uh, my roll 20 that I've been doing the rolling on says that's a disastrous success. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's accurate yes yes if you're not above I then it's bad again twink, so i feel like maybe this is what we're embracing but you know what screw it it's, it's just a game like if you roll too high it like turns yep. back into being like yep it's basically like fantasy blackjack except lower numbers if that i helps. pretend i understood yep. that so yes a 12 
Okay. So you you pass through the wall swimmingly. Mm. You kind of pass by Zast's front half just like stuck in the wall like sup and you with the force of your push you push right into your bestie Shadrach who is bent over the supine I would say I say supine form but what looks like it's definitely a no longer supining form so this is probably someone who is at least in a coma if not no longer existing and Shadrach is bent over them mm -hmm. and you realize that the little voices that you heard the little whimpers are all coming from the little Ooh, motes shadows. of darkness oh they don't notice you when you come in. I'd like to think that I like I, like I'm about to say something, but the sight of somebody like laid out beside them, I just like swallow those words up before they leave my throat. Hmm. I'm just gonna turn around and look at Zas and be like, <laughs> um, Zas, do you say anything? Is it bad? It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Ah, oh, so bad. Get, get, get. We need power, mommy. Here, um, <laughs> I, I will say, um, I have the opportunity to offer you yeah. a golden opportunity. I so, um, what do you want to do that? would be unreasonable in the normal course of things. But I might just grant because of time. Unreasonable. Um, I want to know, I, I want to um, reach in to try and tap into my ability to like get into people's energies and like feed off. I need to know what they're about so that I know if I should be feeding or not. And I'm going to try to dangerously tap into the back end of Shadrach here to, I, I, I want to feel how likely it is that this is the harbinger I am stood right next to. So as you are reaching within yourself, uh -huh. almost in a way that you feel that you might be causing it, there is another, <laughs> there is another flash of silence. You can't hear anything. You can't even hear the ringing in your ears. There is just a whisper, an urge, almost a command to believe mortals a weak and petty wormen and they should know their place uh, you <laughs> are going yeah. to gain three darkness tokens oh. and as is Zast, because Zast can hear this too. Yeah. Um, muscle Mommy is doing fine, pacing at the other end, other side of the wall. <laughs> it may help there, it's too close to the sun, Zast. Yep. So I am going to lean back and look to Kana. It's bad. It's bad in there. <laughs> 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 uh, can I sigh and be like, do you want me to come in? Yeah. <laughs> we need help. Um, what do you add to that? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Something else. This is 
that <laughs> stop and think trying to remember i kind of going to mouth her highness <laughs> mistress <laughs> you know what close enough and kana will enter the wall i will say that um kana you uh, reacted with spider arrogance and you also asked someone to worship you so you gave i did yeah two two, oh, yeah. two darkness tokens oh yeah so as as kana uh power walks her way through the wall um um for the sake of time i'm going to say uh nancy's character you recognize the voice in your head it's it's urging you to destruction it just it just it just it just wants you to destroy humans and their disgusting world of just excluding everyone they don't think belongs when really are they the ones who should have inherited the earth and um so who do you think that voice belongs to and zast you the normally very helpful very well adjusted omen class monster suddenly you feel this really unfamiliar it's just been so long since you felt like this you are most sickened sickened by the humans you've had to deal with humans at division the humans who just run everything the transport they control everything they just take and they take and they just expect you to help with all the things what do they expect of you what more can they expect of you and which human face comes to mind when you're thinking this the division leader yeah Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Hamalu, I, I think you have a link to click on if you have I I have, yep. Yeah, it's already clicked. Okay. Cool. Yep. And um whose voice is it that you recognize in your head? Um I think it might be that Esther. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um yeah. Um that this is perhaps all a front. Has has um has uh Shadrach, Shadrach done anything? Um so you can he was feel hunched over this body. Mm -hmm, sorry, Kaya. Yeah, so you can feel that, that Shadrach is conflict with himself even more than you you'd heard before you can hear that the whimpering that you heard was mm. from the 427 modes of darkness you can hear that those were the things that were those were the little beings or one being or parts of a being that were crying out for their lost friend who they have preserved in this shrine so this is what you have uncovered is um a small shrine mm -hmm. to a forgotten god mm -hmm. one that kana might vaguely recognize Ooh. and we will ask kana about the um, markings on the wall look remarkably like the talisman that you found kana okay and as the like you don't feel you feel the the kind of rage in the room that that the rage against humans wash over you but it doesn't affect you in the same way that it affects these two there is with the with the surge of power there is also a journal that drops as you push through the wall it's as if it was trapped in the wall it kind of falls to the ground as you as you go through the wall it 
if you pick it up and rifle through it, it is full of entries, especially toward the end of the writing, where the writing stops. The person has just said, I want to go home. 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 When you three, because I'm assuming that um, Muslim Mommy helps Zast come in fully into yeah. the secret shrine. You yeah, see yeah, that okay. the supposedly supine form is the embalmed body of Amit. Oh. You see that Shadrach is essentially mourning. And at this point, I will tell you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Nancy. I was just, I was going to do something to slash for Shadrach. I don't know if you want me to wait for what you're going to say or do now. I think it might be best to wait. So, yep. um, basically, you have all uncovered at least four um, of the facet of the keys um, to the to the mystery to the door. Do you want to try and figure out the mystery? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'll have to roll for it. Okay. Aww. I. I. If. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what? In order to do this, basically, what you have to do is, since you are ready to unlock all the pieces of the mystery. Um, if you're ready to declare what the door is and how to unlock it, tell me where the door is. Tell me how the keys you found, which I'll tell you what which the keys were again, um, uh, how they connect to these four facets of the mystery. Um, yeah. He said there was a basement, there was a pit. Mm -hmm. because everywhere just has a pit and said it so nonchalantly so I think maybe the door is down in the pit I will need you to one of you to roll for this though oh I see Ooh. and then we do it I understand <laughs> first I'm playing the game sorry <laughs> <laughs> no it's fair who wants to roll can we use darkness tokens when we're doing it nope this is okay. one roll you cannot I got use an Ooh, Zest has rolled. Zest got an eight. Okay, so on an eight, you have tracked down Doom's door. You know exactly where it is and how to unlock it. In addition, Urna will present an opportunity to protect what matters most. I'm assuming the dog. I don't know what you want to protect. Um, to take down the Harbinger, whoever they may be. Or otherwise, drive back the apocalypse. Okay, so tell me um, how the... I'll tell you the keys. Tell me how they connect to the facets. And then I will see what happens. The keys that you have uncovered are an ancient talisman soaked in blood. Um, you have uncovered a silver dagger stained with blood and covered in thick brown fur. Mm -hmm. a perfect pristine cake filled with maggots, a small shrine to a forgotten god, a journal filled with entries of someone longing to go home, and you have... Uh, I think that is yep yeah. so you have discovered six keys to the apocalypse of the apocalypse the facets that you wanted uh, were the harbinger who they are the door of power where it is which like yeah um the identity of amit's killer and you already have the source of power that is regressing mercy's residence um Tell me how all of this ties together. 
And remember, there are no wrong answers here. This is collaborative storytelling. So I will add where I want to, but you have rolled successfully that you have found the door. So you have done well already. <laughs> so basically, mm -hmm. this is your chance to explain what happened. And I will add where I can. Any of you can go and all of you can tell it together. Yeah. Um, I can't figure out like what to do. If if we're here in a shrine, perhaps wherever the central portion of the shrine is, is where the actual door is then. And it kind of yeah. is, is what's leading down to. So to, to, to um, give you the option, I would say that uh, since you were saying something about the pit, I would say yeah. that the shrine, when you unlock the door, leads down into the pit. Yeah. Where all pretense of help is gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Since you have unlocked the door yeah. to the uh, to thing, I will say that at a doom's door, I will say that you do know how to unlock it, and that is to use the talisman. Mm -hmm. I it, think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interestingly, Tell me could you when you unlock it? actually be um it's because i know that we're looking for like the person but um it when we're looking for his killer is that can that be means that in which he is killed also or just like a person so you can absolutely describe um how um i would say because you found the knife covered mm -hmm. in blood that would yeah. be useful to use you know that there is an acidic um, ingredient that is present in the kitchen that is in being the used in some things like the cake, but the cake wouldn't have been what what killed Amit because that was years ago. Mm. It, it could be tying into what is causing the powers to over if everyone's been eating it, perhaps. Uh, it could be causing what? Sorry. Uh, what's causing the regression to happen if everybody's been eating it? Because um, if everyone's eating from this kitchen, perhaps it plays a part in what is um, causing the reverting to happen. Mm -hmm. not, not to mention the whispers that Nancy and Zast could hear. Mm -hmm. With the that could also be subconsciously influencing the monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of unzast, but yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think maybe the, I forgot the person's name, the, the monster. Uh, the one made of darkness. Oh, no, no, uh, the one made of darkness. Shadrach. Yeah. It, it, it could be that Shadrach is, because given the, given the journal and the wanting to go back home and the shine, like maybe Shadrach is, trying to get back to some some primordial god and is killing people to achieve that like ritualistically yeah and when we when i was speaking to shadrach there was like multiple voices and personalities going on so maybe one of them is mourning amit absolutely but maybe it was shadrach that did it yeah um, so maybe also um, it might have uncovered something he wasn't supposed to find, and they killed him to keep him from letting it get out. Yeah. The journal um, could be honest. What do you think? What do you think uh, Amit found out? That it is not salvation that they are offering here. It is not therapy. It is a way of controlling them. I mean, if they're making them feel like they're human and then sending them off into the world and then they're reverting, perhaps what they're creating is in fact just weaponizing the monsters that they are against Ooh, their weird. What if what if Shadrach is the principal? He's like not. that's he's no. not. Oh. 
<laughs> I went full like Principal <laughs> Smith was the yeah, and Esther's his daughter. Yeah. yeah but what if Shadrach is everyone? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also That's Esther. Shadrach, Shadrach is the Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Um. Who okay. do you think the Harbinger is? So you've said I'm that um, Shadrach is the is the person who killed Ahmed. Killed Ahmed. Um, it is the baker. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it could be the either the if if not the principal then Esther because the the vibes that I got when we were coming in were a little off. I don't believe in how I she met us, know. and perhaps what Shadrach did um, whilst. You know, it it killed Amit. If Amit was the one who perhaps the journal was like, I just want to go home. He Amit learned that this wasn't working. Learned that this was not um, the the therapy, the the help that was being offered. And he stopped doing it. He stopped eating the food. He stopped attending classes. Um, and so that was really suspicious. And perhaps that his death was a way of releasing him from the inevitable, which is to them to unleash your power. So perhaps Principal Smith. Principal Smith or Esther or yeah. actually both. Mm. <laughs> so I would say that Principal Smith is more um, guilty of letting it happen. Okay. Whereas I think you were, your instincts were correct that Esther is yeah. the power behind the mm -hmm. she was like we can give help like assume that we were there for help and got frustrated that we weren't there trying to seek help yeah um yeah and just comparing it to zast's own experience in similar program whereas zast actually did improve and hasn't reverted so compared to the ones that go through this location yeah. Um, so um, you have identified the harbinger. You have identified the door. You have identified the, the power, the source of the power that was making them revert, um, more or less. And you have um, identified Amit's killer. Congratulations. You have solved the mystery behind this mm. adventure. So um, given that... Uh, you will all be uh, shunted back to division to the office you were at um, with uh, even Anna giving you begrudging congratulations on averting the apocalypse. Well done you, I guess. Um, and just describe in like one line each what incredibly mundane office type activity you do immediately after everyone's like come and congratulated you for a job well done. Um, Zast, what do you do? Zast will participate in the monthly team building activities like trust falls and stuff like that <laughs> just to reassert that they are of a group that does care even if they're bad at showing it amazing um uh nancy what are you doing uh nancy goes back and has a little circle of people who are like the um you know gossip girlies of the office and I like to sit in the room and they enjoy my patter um, but mostly I just like listening to them gossiping about things that are so mundane and normal and you know so and so did this and this happened and this happened that night and have you seen this picture because they just there's a sense of peace that they get in listening to that and and how far removed it is from the life that they lead. Incredible. Anna's gonna open a bunch of spreadsheets with like you know like like the catalogs of like various monsters that are known of 
mm-hmm. and just start adding like an identification for which type of animal they most resemble for the ones that are like animals mm-hmm. and then also copy paste the list of the dog ones for herself <laughs> amazing using company time well so um if you have enjoyed uh watching this apocalypse keys uh one shot please consider donating to the women for women international which horde of tales women in gaming month is helping raise money for it is a really incredible charity that is raised that raises money for women who have uh, suffered in conflict and war situations and helps them gain skills uh, that can help them with their livelihoods. Um, If uh, you all liked this mystery, it will soon be available on the Evil Hat website. There is also um, an additional Apocalypse Keys playbook uh, that the same writer has made, which will soon be available on his itch. Um, that is, um, look him up at Arman Babu on Twitter. Um, I will, in fact, you know what? Just look for me. I will retweet this stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I will first throw over to my wonderful players for, or Harbingers or Omen Class Monsters, however you may think of them, um, to tell you who they are, who they've played, and what they're up to in the TTRPG realms, if they have anything to plug. Um, let's start with Kana slash Assis. Uh, I'm Assis. I'm a little lesbian goblin. And okay, very big lesbian goblin. You can find me at Lesbioning. And you can find me on a bunch of VODs from either Horde of Tales or the Asian Dragons or Pancer's Tables. Also, I have the Onrush. It's a campaign. Um, homebrew, Pancer's Tables, Fridays. Thank you, Aziz. Um, Zast, uh, also known as Denver. Hey, y'all. I'm Denver. She, they. Uh, you can find me on the Bird app as uh, DEA Grant Draws on Blue Sky as Dendinius. And you can also tune in to the Games Taverns, Whiskey Magic and Destruction. I'm one of the moderators in the chat there. And um, yeah. And Nancy, aka Humble or Emma, tell us about you. It's me. Hi, yes. I am Emma Humble on the internet, uh, using she they pronouns. Uh today I was Nancy or Penance, uh, who was our little disaster twink. Um uh, the hunger. Um, in terms of where you can find me, I am on uh Saturdays over at Valdry the channel running a Mass Effect game. We have three episodes left for that one. On Sundays, you can see me over at Girls on These Worlds, where I am running a Dragon Age campaign, which is great because it's just a, it's, it's a dating simulator, apparently. Um, <laughs> not intentional, but here we are. Um, and at the end of the month, I'm going to be launching a channel with uh, someone who's been on this channel a few times, Sakaya, um, called The Transmissions. We're going to have a Dragon Age game on Tuesdays, and we're also going to be releasing a podcast using the Liminal system, which is folk horror set in Wales in the 70s. And that's me. Yay! Oh, really looking forward to it. Um, if uh, you are curious about who on earth I am, I've played various characters today and the Keeper. I am Bruna M. My pronouns are she, her. I am a TTRPG game designer, writer, editor, and wearer of many hats. You can find me on Twitter at um, Bruna Writes. Um, and I am currently on um, I'm co-designing uh, the not yet the TTRPG that is that is just smashed through another um, stretch goal today. Um, we are uh, going to well. If you've backed it, then you're going to get the game pretty soon. If you um, haven't backed it yet, why not go check it out? It is a two-player romance TTRPG. Um, my partner Arman and I. Uh, make up weave games we have also made a two-player romance ttrpg where you get to create your own holiday rom-com make uh, a very tropey um hallmarky movie 
and insert yourself into narratives that don't normally see you. Um, and we are doing a whole bunch of fun stuff, but I can blather on about it for days. So just find me on Twitter or um, drop us a line um, at we.weave.games at gmail.com uh, to hear about more. Thank you, Horde of Tales, for having us. It was a pleasure. Uh, Apocalypse Keys is a brilliant game. If you like PBTA games, you should definitely check this out. As for Horde of Tales, aside from being lovely hosts and incredibly well organized, um, they also are supporting important causes. And to support them, please catch up. Ca ugh. Check out the VOD of um, their Vessen game, one shot at youtube.com forward slash Horde of Tales. There are chats, there are links in the chat, not chats in the links. There are links in the chat if you want to find that stuff. There are links for all of our stuff. Um, and thank you for supporting women and fine femme folks throughout this Women in Gaming Month. Thank you all. Goodbye. Happy time zone. Bye.